Hello and welcome. This is Rufamonger. And in this video, I want to go over the top 10 worst variation specific moves in Mortal Kombat 11. So, variations in Mortal Kombat, right? And the idea is here we get a base character and you can pick a couple extra moves. Uh, to kind of add some extra shine, right? The variation, that's what it's all about, is here's your base character and here's some just extra fun things to work with. However, a lot of these extra moves are often not worth the cost of entry, and a lot of the times, too, they can be worse than the actual base move that they replace. Sub-Zero, for example, right? Um, so, yeah, that's kind of what I want to talk about in this video here. Um, just, you know, which variation-specific moves just don't live up? So here at number 10, I want to talk about Variation 3 Baraka and the Baraka Zerker special move. This guy here. And this move is one of the most underwhelming moves in the game. Um, the reason why it's on this list, well, besides the fact there ain't much to it. Like, hey, you can switch sides. That's kind of neat, right? But you already have Blade Charge, and you can switch sides with that move whenever you want. And say if you're doing it in uh, a combo sense, right? So if I want to burn a bar, if I was so inclined, uh, we will do how much? 218.59 damage. Yet we still have Chop Chop in this variation, right? And the same move with the Chop Chop, and if we burn a bar on Chop Chop, it does more damage. And it leaves you directly on top of them with a lot of frame advantage, and not much more to be said than that. Like, um... If you're picking this variation, it's definitely for leg stab. Like, that is the reason you're coming here, right? 100% absolutely. And Baraka Zerker just feels like it was put there because a variation needs another... Like, they can't leave a blank spot, right? And that feels like it's the whole reason that's in here. It's just... It's one of the most underwhelming moves in the game to me. And uh, especially compared to some other stuff and other variations, it definitely falls up short. For number 9 on the list here, it is the buff... For Nightwolf here, the Kiba buff. And man, this one of the moves when Nightwolf was coming out, I was looking a lot, I was very much looking forward to this move, right? I love the concept of, you know, hey, do the thing, get damage buff. Except one, the damage buff, it's not a lot. Like, I love the screen shaking effect, that's really cool. Uh, but it doesn't last long at all. The X version as well, it does more damage yet, that's cool. But man, that buff just don't last long at all. Uh, you know, put it in place with the fact, hey, when you're doing it, you're stuck in place for a fair amount of time. Uh, like, this is a prime distance, say, if you are to do the buff, to get, you know, bonked by a projectile. And yes, the EX version does have armor indeed, but, you know, it still doesn't stop you from getting hit. You still take the damage, it just doesn't knock you out of doing the buff. And to get any real use out of the buff, once you get it off, then you gotta work your way in and then actually get a combo, otherwise you just kinda wasted a bar. Um, if the move lasted longer, I think it would be a lot more viable, but in the end, there's a reason why you don't really see Nightwolf players using it, and now almost every single Nightwolf player has kind of moved on to the Shaman variation anyways. Uh, so yeah, just the uh, keep a buff, very underwhelming. Here at number 8 is Sub-Zero with the Cold Shoulder. Now, Cold Shoulder in and of itself is not an awful move. And once again, this is top 10 worst variation-specific moves, right? Uh, and in and on that note, specifically variation, that's the biggest crime of this move here. Uh, because it replaces the slide. And if I were to do like a top 10 best moves period list, Sub-Zero slide would definitely be on it and probably closer to the top than not. Because, yo, the slide is really good. So Cold Shoulder is a mid, Slide is a low, Cold Shoulder is 16 frame startup, Slide is 11, and while they're both EXable, and they both have crushing blows, uh, Slide KB is one of the best crushing blows in the game, period, and one of the best ways to close out a match, and Cold Shoulder KB, it's only if you get it like as a counter hit or a punish, which means you had to do it raw, and you know, spoiler here, but this move... It ain't safe on block, right? With slide, and we're on a variation now that has slide here. With slide being one of the best moves in the game, period, the cold shoulder really stands out because if you could pick the variation with EX Ice and just have a blank spot for your third uh, variation point, it would be a better variation overall because then you would have EX Ice and you would have slide, right? It's literally that cut and dry. Cold shoulder is a full-on inferior version of the move it replaces and uh there'll be other such moves later in this list as well uh you know it, it's a matchup dictating thing too because like 
Sly can punish a lot of things that a lot of other characters can't punish, right? A lot of characters can get away with stuff they can't get away with against Sub-Zero because the slide being so quick and so fast moving across the screen. And in Variation with Cold Shoulder, you lose that ability. So it just sucks all around. And slide is an infinitely better move. Okay, let's talk Shock Jock Variation of Johnny Cage and the Brass Knuckles buff. So Brass Knuckles, it buffs your punch damage on block. So not on hit. Even though your fists are glowing on hit, it's the same like 3% for a stand 2 uh, with or without the buff. It doesn't matter, right? And uh, if it is on block, uh, say it was stand 1 does 3 per, uh, three damage on chip here, and we get our buff on, well, now it does 6. And it's kind of like whatever, right? Uh, the Nucks are definitely a far cry from where they were in MKX, right? Where you can get your Nucks up here and back one to spam the day away and have a grand old time. Uh, one of the big things, you know, Mortal Kombat 11, Johnny's primary form of engagement is kicks. You know, like, you know, these are the strings you're going to see a lot of, right? Nucks do not need apply because, you know, you're not doing that much punching. And once again, to get the buff set up, you got to spend a lot of time. That's 100 frames of setup right there, right? It's a lot of time for the enemy to kick your head in. Because uh, even if you knock them down, there's no knockdown that covers 100 frames. And they can easily walk, just wake up and punish you, right? Um, this is very close to being a dead move. Like, uh, it's a bad move too, sure, absolutely, but like a dead move. Like, I can't remember last time I've seen people do this. Uh, other than they're screwing around or this like they're funning around or just whatever, right? Um, the Nux, it just don't matter. Now, if you could somehow apply this buff to your kicks and then like these kind of strings all of a sudden get buffs like to chip damage and hey, now we're talking, right? But as it stands, just very, very, very underwhelming. Gotta talk about Soul Well for Spellmaster Shang Tsung. That's this guy here. On paper, I love it as a concept. You put up the thing, you smack around the enemy, you cash out, you get some life back. Love the idea of it, uh, but in reality, you know, in proper match situations, man, I don't know. Uh, to set it up here, that's 140 frames, and of course the enemy is not standing still to just let you do it. And there ain't no knockdown in this game that's going to give you enough time to set it up, right? Uh, and if you want to cash out, once again here... Still over 140, that's 150 frames total, right? Uh, once again, the enemy's not going to stand around and let you do it. So, I love the idea of the move, but it's just too slow for what it does. Like, if you manage to luck out and get all your hits, it could be as simple as this. Because, yo, it doesn't wait around. That's the real kicker, right? It will go away, as you can see right there. And if it goes away, all the stuff you built up, hey, too late. So, uh, if you're sitting there and you got a nice cash out waiting and you got it set up with no problem, here's the thing. Maybe you're under pressure. Maybe you can't safely go for it. You're going to get your head beat in. Maybe you're comboing them, right? And if you go like 1-1 one, one, and then try to combo out, they get to punish you if you try to cash out while you're hitting them too, right? So it's really no win. Uh, Spellmaster definitely is much a better character in uh, Aftermath for sure, right? A lot of stuff got buffed, but the Soul Well is not one of them, and I think it really could use a buff. So, Shao Kahn, at the risk of sounding like a broken record, all the buffs suck. Dark Priest buff sucks, and the two taunts in the other variation, they all suck. Why? Because they take forever and a day to do. It's really that cut and dry. It's just, they're so long. There's no real situation where you can get it off safely against a giant chunk of the cast. Now, there are some characters where you can, and, you know, God bless those matchups, I guess. But even something as this, you know... Allegedly as safe as safe could be full screen spear, you know, uh, you know a hell of a lot of head advantage 34 frames of advantage from full screen. Can we get it off safely? Okay, so here we are got hit time to get my buff. Oh wait punish Done <laughs> bonk. It's over, right? Uh, it's literally that's how she goes right even from full screen you no know, best case scenario setup a lot of characters can still punish it and uh, the second you get any amount closer, it just gets worse and worse and worse and more and more and more characters can easily punish it. And this is the fast one, by the way. The taunts, they are way slower than the Dark Priest buff. So there's just basically no winning. Um, I've said it a million times since the game came out. Make the moves faster, you know. Maybe make the buffs not as significant, you know. Uh, like the Shao Kahn buff here, it has about 10% all hammer damage. 
Um, maybe make it add 5%. I don't know, right? But just make the buffs faster because they're not very good at all. And they have never been worth doing. Scarlet Variation 3. So back when the new variations were happening, I had a lot of hope for this one. And then, of course, I nerfed a lot of it and changed it. And, you know, Stand 4 4 doesn't go to the boiling point anymore, which sucks. But that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about the Crimson Shield. And just what a dumb move it is. So one doesn't last all too long. Uh, it is a damage resisting move, meaning while you have this buff up, you take less damage. Now, once again here, like some of these other buffs we're talking about, over 100 frames to start up, and Scarlet is a character, she's got stuff to do from full screen, right? Like, she is not hurting for options to do stuff to people at all, right? Uh, so you can definitely be doing something, because the whole predication of this move is, I'm doing this on the, assuming I'm going to get my head kicked in. Um, and when you have this buff up, you take about 15% less damage overall, if I remember correctly. But yeah. You're doing this basically on the hopes that you get hit. And what? You know, like, that's not sensible game plan. Uh, if you're doing this, and ideally you're safe to do this, why aren't you doing anything else? Yo, she's got some of the best big normals in the game. She's got good pressure. Like, she could be going for a quick shot and getting, you know, 7% uh, of her health back. If it gets a hit or whatever, or blood ball, or anything, right? But you're like, no, nah, I'm going to do this in case I get hit. And then, I guess you win, quote-unquote, when you get hit and you just take a little bit less damage in the short window it's actually active for. And it'll almost certainly go away while you're getting hit because it does not last for very long, right? Unless you got hit right after you did it, then good job, dummy. That's really all I can say. So, yeah, just fundamentally poor move idea. And the fact that it's in a variation, this is ideally one of the reasons you're picking this variation. This is your sick bonus for picking this variation. Just a complete failure of a move. Coming right off the backs of the Scarlet Defense buff, let's talk Robocop Variation 3, the Electric Shield. Uh, so it doesn't even give you damage protection. What the Electric Shield does is every time they hit you while it's up with a physical attack, you take 1% damage. And it's, I guess I enjoy the idea on paper, but here's the thing. You lose an offensive and the defensive bar for doing it. That is a giant cost to entry, right? And yeah, I might take a little bit of damage if I'm hitting you with this, if I get a combo. But once again, you're doing this on the idea that you're going to be losing, right? Like, I guess it's a cute idea if it's like a chip out scenario. Like they got so little health that you can just laugh them off. But in any other scenario than this, you're burning a lot of your very precious resource on the fact that you might get hit. And the thing is, too, with an offensive and defensive bar being taken up here i now know as the offensive player you just lost a defensive bar i can do whatever i want to do and i know you can't break away anymore right uh so yeah i might take a couple points of damage but i can rest assured i can get any combo i want on you and you got no chance to break away because you decided to burn it on this move instead right uh just once again i just think poor design so here we are, Shang Tsung again, and this time we're going to talk about Warlock. Now, I think Shang Tsung's a great character, and I think Warlock probably is the best variation. I think overall, Shang Tsung with Warlock, one of the best characters in the game. Maybe not like tippity top tier, but one of the best characters in the game. But, yo, let's talk about double EX Fireball. Uh, Warlock's a great variation. You know, we got the ground fire, we got corpse drop, which is one of the best moves in the game. But, double EX Fireball. Wow. Why? Like, regular EX Fireball, sure, whatever, I get it, right? Uh, but there's basically, like, this is just, like, oh, to fill up a slot, basically. Like, we have Ground Fire, which is a great move in and of itself, and the only reason we have Double EX Fireball is because they're like, well, gotta put something else in, but I guess we don't want to make it too good, otherwise this variation would be too good. Uh, the only time I've ever seen this Double Fireball used in any kind of real capacity is if it's the... And it's the kill. Like, you already committed to the EX Fireball, and then, like, oh, I guess if I do the double EX, it's a kill, it wins the round. That's about it. Otherwise, why? Like, you almost never see it. And for good reason, because Shang Tsung, in this variation especially, has all the reason in the world to burn bar on, like, anything else, right? Um, now, not to say, you know, 1EX isn't bad, because 1EX is fine, especially in the corner, because this variation suffers in the corner if you didn't do uh, the 4-2-4-2 combo. Uh, but 
yeah, just really pointless. On such a strong character, on such a strong variation, this just really shows up uh, to me a flaw of the variation system because this only there because they had to give it to him because it's a third variation point and they didn't want to give him anything worthwhile to make this variation 2 OP. And finally here at number one, Kotal Khan, Ascension Variation God Ray. So Kotal took him a long time, but you know, I used to make a lot of videos near, you know, the launch of MK11, crying about how bad Kotal was, and hey, he was awful. And he eventually got there, right? And Ascension, especially now that Bullock got a little bit of a nerf, probably his best overall variation, right? And then we got the God Ray. Which is, uh, we talked to like earlier, uh, Sub-Zero Cold Shoulder being basically a nerf over Slide. Uh, this is the most pronounced version of it I can find in this game. God Ray is a full-on inferior and basically every possible aspect version of the base Sunbeam move. And I can only figure out they put it in the game specifically because they didn't want him to have the base Sunbeam. So they gave him something strictly worse. So what use does it have? Well, basically if they got like, you know, one or two points of health left... It's like your chip out kill, right? But here's the thing. If we want to do that in one of the other variations, it's easy as pie. You just EX it and it tracks. There's no avoiding it. They'll eventually take those couple ticks of points of damage and you get that chip out kill regardless. And the base move, you get to dump it on your head. You get the healing right away. It's a little over half a percent each tick and there's a lot of ticks. You gain a fair chunk of health back. Uh, if you're just gonna sit and wait and force people to come to you, that's awesome. Uh, gives you the damage buff, right? So that's 80 uh, by itself. If we're in the sun, all of a sudden, hey, it's 100, right? We do more damage while we're in the sun. And it just lets Kotal just sit and wait and just be annoying in that way. And Kotal has the most health in the game now too, right? And this just gives him even more effective health. And once again, if you want that chip kill, it's just as simple as burning a bar. You can follow through. And of course, while you know, you're chasing after him, hey, maybe you hit him while they're doing it. And you get more damage than you otherwise normally would because they're taking damage from the ticks and you're getting damage buff while you're comboing them. So in all points, the base Sunbeam is a superior move to the God Ray. Once again, don't think Kotal is bad. I think Ascension is a good variation, but he would be strictly buffed if they got rid of the God Ray and just gave him the base Sunbeam. So if he didn't have the quote unquote variation bonus, the reward for picking this variation, he would be better off in the end. So hey, that's the video. Let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree with some of my takes, or if you got your own, hey, post them and let me know what you think. Uh, so once again, this is more on the back of variation specifically. That's why it's top 10 worst variation moves and not just worst moves overall. Because while I think variations were a worthy experiment in Mortal Kombat X, I feel like Mortal Kombat 11 makes me really feel like they outstayed their welcome. I'd much rather each character be a complete character with a lot of moves baked in and just have a lot more options overall than the variations which leads to a lot of characters of like, you know, a lot of characters only have one good variation and some of the variations are like, kinda why? Like why do you have this weird hodgepodge of abilities put together that have no synergy at all together? Yeah. Like I think Baraka Variation 3 is a pretty good idea of that, right? Because Variation 3 just feels like it's random moves slapped together. Um, yeah, so I only hope in the future, MK12, whenever that is, uh, variations finally go away and we get more complete, fully fleshed out characters that don't need variations. But I guess that's just a little rant about that. So once again, comments, let me know what's going on. And I guess that's it for this video. So hey, thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well. Go out and play some Mortal Kombat.